Yeah, OK. What would you like to talk about? Dan? Well, I just wanted to... Well, I thought this was a good opportunity to extend on what I was saying earlier about the entrance thing. So if we imagine that actually at all times, everywhere, the whole world is a park. The whole world is this incredible park. And what's happening is other people, organisations, want the most precious thing there is, which is your attention. They want you to not be thinking about what you want to think about and they want you to be thinking about them. Because that's what makes them big. So as we look here, we'll see that what happens is these various emporiums light up their signs to get your attention. And each one's giving you their promise, their entrance behind that sort of thing. You know, so I don't know, I can't even you with the glasses, but the point is that, you know, those shiny lights are there to draw you out of the park of the world and into there where you'll spend your power, you know, which is your awareness, your attention. It's our, our living awareness is what gives companies their size and all this sort of nonsense, you know. But I just wanted to talk about this Occupy thing for a minute because it's really interesting that um, something that's made mainstream media like that which, uh, you know, a lot of alternative stuff doesn't get there. But if we look at the imagery that's being created here, it's like this, who, whose vision of the future is this? Whose vision of an opposition to capitalism is this? So the kind of symbology that's being shown to the masses here is, this is what happens to you when you try and oppose the capitalist world. This is what happens to you when you bail out of the system. You're going to end up in a shanty town. You know, this is it. Because, I mean, you would think that what some of the people here would maybe be trying to express is, well, by getting out of the system, you'll be free, you'll be liberated, you'll be happy, you'll be empowered, we're having a great time, we're having a party. But that's not what's happening, is it? Look at the images here, look at the images of London and Wall Street and all the rest of it. Fair enough, in Wall Street, they got the celebration a lot more powerfully, there was a lot more of that. Whereas here, though, it's kind of a bit tainted in the imagery. And all I am suggesting is that if we look at the fact that this is a permitted movement, as it were, you know, there's loads of alternative stuff going on that doesn't make the mainstream media and I think we have to look at why Occupy and Anonymous are the ones that are making the mainstream media. Who's funding them? Where are all these where is all these things coming from? And why is this why is this the mode of expression that's allowed, whereas other healthier, more positive and inclusive solutions which are out there aren't getting the same voice. You know, there's 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 vastly superior solutions to this that are out there and available in alternative media and elsewhere and none of it's getting a mainstream voice but as this sort of really negative post-apocalyptic sort of uh, yeah you know uh, first world third world crossover image is the one that is being allowed to go out there and I just invite people to be very careful about repeating that image in their mind and what it means and perhaps being careful about um, you know investing too much in that sort of perspective because in these times of co-create you know this is a time of co-creativity we're all visioning how we'd like to see our reality and our environment and if you're repeating somebody else's vision then what world are you going to end up in and, and you know i ask people to think think to themselves is this your vision is it is that the is that the vision you want to repeat and what you want to see happening everywhere is people sleeping on pavements in cities because that's not my vision of a post post capitalist world i can see it being much much more interesting and vibrant and creative and loving and celebratory and uh, you know it's just those sort of solutions are the ones that need to be getting out so yeah just a point of thought there i just wanted to share that it's been in my head in the last couple of days Okay, yeah, just before we went, I just wanted to draw attention to these signs that are here, which is really interesting, because these are big banners that are being allowed, as it were. So we've got National Move Your Money Day, 2nd of December. There it is, big, massive banner. So who came up with that idea? Whose idea was it to move the money? Because to me, the thing to do is withdraw the money. Okay, you withdraw the money, the banks are dead, there you go, job done. What's interesting, though, is that somebody's making money out of moving money. Okay, so I would just say, whose idea was it? Where did it come from? Because somebody's cashing in on that. And it's just interesting to see how, again, you know, how many things manage to get to the mainstream media when actually they're, they're not really the solutions people think they are. And it becomes a form of controlled venting. You know, what this is, is controlled venting. This is where you have people who are allowed to come here and, you know, have their little moment of, oh, yeah, this is my, this is my objection, this is my protest or whatever. And then they feel, they feel satisfied. They feel like, oh, I've done my bit, I feel spent, you know. I get, you know, I'm going to be pacified again for a while and then they'll go back and do, do whatever else. And, you know, it's just really, really dangerous the outlets that we choose like this for controlled renting like the move the money day don't move the money withdraw it you know invest ethically things like that yeah that's a lot more sensible but i think it's really interesting you've got people like even tony blair the other day on sunday morning on the andrew marshall I haven't seen him speak for years but all of a sudden he's talking about there being two trillion in liquid capital assets in in the corporate sector in the uk at the moment and actually the stop gap has got nothing to do with public spending it's to do with corporate hoarding and you know there's a whole i'm not even going to get started on that but you know we can do a whole bit about how big societies are banked and all this sort of stuff and it's really interesting how um 
the story that's being spun as being positive, obviously, is it, actually really easy to expose as being not. Anyway, I don't want to go on about that too much. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're going to go again just for a moment because the bells are ringing here, which was, I think, to remind me to mention the fact that, obviously, this is church grounds that this is on. And obviously in London as well, it's church grounds that it's on. And I think uh, it's a really interesting point that in America they managed to occupy the financial sector, but they couldn't get away with it here. You know, London is, as it were, the belly of the beast in a big way when it comes to finance and all this sort of stuff. And it's really interesting that um, it's landed at the foot of St. Paul's, and here it's on the church grounds in Bristol. And I, I don't know where it is elsewhere in the country, but I find it funny that this is all coming back at the church's door. And um, I just think it's going to be interesting to see in coming weeks and months uh, how the you know how the church is going to come back back a lot more into the public scene. But in actual fact, everyone thought the church had disappeared for a while. You know, it had all gone very quiet. And I think it's just going to be interesting to see this animate the spirit of the church and the activity of the church again. So yeah, watch this space. Let's come back and do this in a year. <laughs> Thank you.